Are you new to Gloomhaven? Have you always wondered how to play? Did you hear about the digital edition that's available now in early access? If that's you, we're here to help here on Legendary Tactics. So I'm just going to play against the normal um, AI. Um, I'm not sure what that means in terms of this game, um, but uh, I'm sure that um, it will be fine. I've played Gloomhaven a few times. Um, no expert, but uh, I've got a pretty decent handle on the game. Um, and uh, this is going to be, you know, basically uh, a walkthrough of the actual gameplay. And the at this uh, stage when I'm recording this the campaign is yet to be released um, so this is a, basically as far as you can go is doing these scenarios and uh, uh, anyway it should be uh, you know it should be an amazing game once it's all done I'm really hoping uh, for the best so um, yeah so we're going to start with the brute and we're going to take him through his first tutorial and uh, so we're going to want to take a look at the 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 battlefield how the camera controls work and again obviously this is going to be more for the uh, you know for the uh, digital version of the game if you're watching this to learn how to play the uh, board game version which um, you absolutely can um, then obviously this isn't going to uh, affect things but I'm just sort of zooming in and out and getting a real good close-up of this dude and uh, yeah okay so interesting i've got the f the whole perspectives here um, and we can zoom in and see this dude mr brute and it uh, looks pretty pretty scary so anyway i'm going to uh, zoom out and back to where we were before all right and um, so if, if you haven't played gloomhaven before um, basically you you have a party of mercenaries so usually you and your friends and each of you has a deck of ability cards that you'll play um, to attack and to move around and, and do what you got to do. So um, every turn you, you basically you take two cards and uh, um, you, you typically would uh, use the top part of one card and the bottom part of another card. Now I'll, I'll show you how that uh, how that looks. So so we've got um, three cards. We've got grab and go. Uh, and here you can actually see the top part is loot, the bottom part is move four. Um, there is trample, which is an attack, and uh, and the bottom part is move with a jump and all that stuff, which we'll get to, and provoking roar. Uh, so that's, uh, it's grayed out, so it's discarded just for the sake of this tutorial. So let's uh, select the two that, uh, that uh, Brute has available. So we'll select trample, and uh, if you'll notice the question mark has changed into a number so the first card you this that means up at the top so that number is initiative and basically the lower the number the earlier you're, you're gonna go in the turn the faster you move so 72 is not great but it's better than 87 um, and so that is uh, you know a factor to take into consideration as far as when you move first now you don't get to see when everyone else gets to what everyone else's number is before you you choose which is interesting so you you know if you pick a, a low initiative number you may get to move first well you certainly will move earlier than most but no guarantee you'll get to move absolutely first and so it's kind of a neat mechanic um, so um, there's no other characters so we're gonna select grab and go as our um, next selection there's only two to choose from so we're going to choose some some actions and you can see the abilities there uh, and uh, you know if you, you can pick either one to um, you know for the uh, what ability either the upper the the top or the bottom i should say um, but if you'll notice the highlighting if you choose this as a um, you choose the top part on this one you'll see the bottom is highlighted on grab and go so you can see it flipping around um, so that's nice and clear. Um, so we'll choose either the top half um, or the bottom half. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's nothing for us to do in this room. So we'll just want to basically move. Um, now I should say at each card, the bottom can always be a move two if you're not happy with that particular uh, ability at the bottom. And the top can always be attack two if you're not happy with the 
uh, attack part. So it's good to, you have some flexibility. You're not forced to do anything uh, necessarily. You do have some, some choices. So anyway, we're going to move uh, through. Um, so let's use the move four in grab and go. And uh, that's good. So we're going to move towards this doorway. One, two, three. And we're going to open the door and see what's out there. Nice. Okay, first enemy, bandit guard. So the monsters also um, choose actions. So you can see here the bandit guard has an initiative of uh, 70. So he gets to, uh, you know, go first. And he's looking to move one and then attack three. So that's not something we want. Um, so he intends to, intends to move an attack. So um, monsters only get one action, but there's it it's, counts as one action, but uh, they get to do sometimes multiple things. So uh, it's kind of a bit of a cheat. But anyway, um, so because he wasn't visible, uh, he doesn't get to use his lower initiative. Um, and so we get to finish our turn before the bandit can act, which is good. Um, so let's get uh, um, him close enough to use the attack. So we have one more movement point left on our movement, if you recall. We only move three spaces before the door. So we'll move right up here. And now that card is discarded. And uh, it goes into our discard pile. And the only way we can get it back in hand is through resting. And this is kind of an interesting mechanic because as you play down your cards, uh, then you... Um, you know, basically you have less and less kind of actions to choose from each turn. And uh, so the only way you can get cards back is by resting. And that's, you know, again, we'll explain that, but there, it involves basically burning cards out of, you know, discarding de uh, cards from your deck permanently, at least as far as this scenario is concerned. And so gradually your deck kind of runs down and that kind of represents exhaustion. It's kind of, a, it's, again, a really neat, mechanic in Gloomhaven that I really like. So um, let's attack. We're going to choose the top half of Trample and crush this guy's very soul. So if we look at him, um, he has, um, let's see, um, we're going to choose him as the target of the attack. It's nice and glowy. So when you attack, an attack modifier is drawn uh, from a deck. Now in, in this, it's going to be computer generated. But they kind of have a, a bit of a randomizer with regard to your attack. Um, and uh, that deck can be kind of changed, you know, if you, if you have certain negative effects or positive effects given to you. And in this case, it didn't affect the damage at all. So the attack just deals the base value of three. And uh, yeah, and just for the tutorial, we'll just keep, th they're just going to keep things simple with zero modifiers. Um, we'll chat about that later, I'm sure. So we just, uh, oh, we did some damage on him. Um, and uh, just want to see, yeah, he has five health. You see that little drip of water there? Uh, the first icon there on the left, that's his health. So we got him for three is two movement, two, two attack, and no ranged attack ability. That's what those are, those icons are across the top. All right, so we're going to end uh, the turn and now it's the bandit's turn and uh, as we saw in his card earlier, he intends to, uh, you know, to basically move and perform a melee attack, but he's right there. He does not have to move. So uh, he uh, is just going to hit me for all he's got. And ouchie. Um, anyway, that's uh, uh, whenever we're hit, um, you actually get three options. So you can just take the damage if you want to. Um, however, if you go to zero, then your character is exhausted and it basically means you have to leave the scenario. Um, if um, everyone in the, of your friends are exhausted as well, you lose the scenario. So you got to have someone active in, in the game in order to, to win. Now, you can burn two discarded cards in it instead of taking the damage. So this can be, um, you know, this can be handy if you're, you know, say about to die or whatever. It's a way for you to absorb that damage. Um, again, burning two discarded cards uh, means that your deck is getting smaller and you are going to run out of sort of energy uh, time, um, you know, basically to finish the scenario. Um, however, if you were to burn two of Brute's cards here, 
he'd have not enough cards left for the following turn and thus would be exhausted. And we're assuming that, you know, again, that uh, it's a small little deck <laughs> that we're working with. So you can choose to burn one available card, and this is grayed out as all the Brutes cards are currently discarded. So that's an available card is one that's in your hand. Um, so it's usually wise to take the damage over burning cards if possible, but it's good to know that there's uh, an option. So let's just take the three damage. We can, we can deal with it. Um, so we're gonna receive damage and we are down to, uh, you know, we've been, we've been hit pretty hard here. Let's see if we can, where's our health? Uh, it doesn't show it very easily that I can see. Uh, maybe here, there we go. Oh, those are the mixture of cards. So that's in that modifier deck that I mentioned. Um, so anyway, so the bandit's turn is now over. We we're the last character to, to act, and so a new round begins. Um, and so during the ability uh, card selection, if you have at least two discarded cards, then you can perform a long or short rest. And so all of the cards are discarded right now. Uh, long rest doesn't count as a card, and so um, we will have to rest in order to continue. A short rest burns one of your discarded cards at random losing it for the rest of the scenario so it's always a risk to do a short rest but you get kind of back up and running quicker you recover all your other discarded cards um, before continuing your turn as normal so it's an immediate thing the long rest takes up the whole turn and you you select two ability cards um, which is nice because you you don't it's not a random card that gets burned or discarded from your deck kind of permanently, quote unquote, for this scenario. Um, but you also get a heal two action and refresh all item cards. Um, now that happens, your initiative's 99. So you're gonna be pretty low on the totem pole uh, when it comes to when you actually get to take this action, um, but it is uh, an option. So if we chose to do a long rest with this bandit standing right in front of us, that would be certain death, I agree. So um let's so yeah assuming if uh they draw an attack card we don't yet know but i assume that's going to be part of their plan um so we better choose to do a short rest so we can get back in the game uh so we're going to perform that short rest and uh we lost grab and go as our random draw um so once per short rest, you can opt to redraw the random card to burn at the cost of one damage. But since we've only got one health left, sorry, it's got to be grab and go. Going to burn it up. All right. And now it's dark red, which means it is burned um, and can't be used in the for the rest of the scenario. However, we have provoking roar and trample uh, back in hand. And so now it's it's a battle to the death here. So let's get in early. So if you'll notice, Provoking Roar has an initiative of 10. So that's one that we're going to, uh, to choose. It's going to give us the best chance of going first here. Okay, so that's going to be our first uh, card selected. Okay, and then our second card selected is Trample. All right. Now that we're in the same room as the Bandit, so we can see that the enemies have drawn and moved to an attack two. So that is not going to be good for them to, uh, the bandit's gonna basically finish us off if he gets to go first. Luckily, his initiative is 50. So, um, you know, we are way uh, we are way ahead in this. Um, so we're going to choose the uh, top half of Trample uh, because he has uh, Five, well, I think he's only got two health uh, left, but we're going to choose that and we're going to target him right there. Confirm the targets and finish him off. And did you notice there's some gold left on the floor? So if you're not in the space, you need to actually use a loot ability, which has a range. So um, uh, basically, you don't automatically get the treasure. So you have to pick it up before the scenario ends. Uh, which is important to know. Um, it's uh, so we're gonna want to um, let's take a look at provoking roar. Now that the bottom, we have to use the bottom one, and it says it doesn't have a move ability in the bottom half. So how can we get there? Well, if you recall, I mentioned earlier this move two um, is um, you know you can always choose move two instead of the bottom half ability. 
just like you can choose attack two instead of the um, upper half ability. Um, so those are the what they call the default actions. And uh, so we're going to instead choose the default action of move two, and we're gonna move and take that gold there. Um, and uh, yes, basically we can skip the rest of the movement and grab the gold. Pick that up, excellent. So did, yeah, great work, great work. Not only did you van vanquish the one guard, you even managed to pick up a few pieces of gold, so that's not too bad. I'm sure our trainer is really, really proud of us. So, um, so that's you know kind of an introduction to the you know the the very basic movement and the very basic um, elements to Gloomhaven. There is more involved. There's some more detail with the attacks and defense and all that stuff. And what we'll do, we'll get into that in the next video. Um, hope you enjoyed uh, just this quick run through of the. Uh, of the tutorial part of uh, the Gloomhaven digital app and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time here on Legendary Tactics.